Hello, County Scholars. I'm Dr. Baldwin, and this is going to be a demonstration from the second chapter of financial accounting. We're going to work the Tama Company problem. Now, you need to have worked this problem first. So, if you have not already done this, uh, close this recording, go back to the list of, of where you clicked to get this recording. Just above that, there will be a link to the PDF that you can print or you can import your iPad if you want to write on your iPad and you can work the problem. You need to work the problem all the way through and then watch the video. The problem at worst will take you an hour. Uh, if you've been studying keeping up really well, probably half an hour. So it sort of depends on you. Do that first, then come back and play the recording. If you've already done that, then let's carry on. Here's the given information for the problem. So we've got uh, the information straight off what you have uh, when you worked it. We have the accounting records of the company and we have two years worth. We have December 31, 2012, and we have December 31, 2013. So this is our year-end numbers for assets and liabilities. Notice we don't have equities, but we know the accounting equation. We can figure out the equities. Uh, then they give us a paragraph of additional information. These are things that went on in, in 2013. Late in 2013, the business purchased a small office building and land for $300,000. You'll notice that office building and land show up here. Okay, they were zero in 2012. Now they're showing up in 2013. They paid uh, 50,000 cash towards the purchase of a, of and a 250,000 note payable. So this note payable shows up in 2013. Um, what else happened? Uh, the owner invested an additional $15,000 cash to help the company have enough cash to make this purchase. And the business pays dividends. So the business pays $250 cash per month for dividends. So in 2013, they must have paid 250 times 12 months in dividends. That will come important in a bit. Now, you'll notice the requirements. Number one is prepare balance sheets for the business as of December 31, 2012 and December 1, 2013. And it gives you this hint. Report only total equity on the balance sheet. So we don't have to worry about the details of equity, just the number. And basically, remember the accounting equation. You can plug that number in. If you know all the assets and liabilities, you can figure out what the total equities are. We're going to do that first, and then we're going to come back and do requirements two and three. So I'm going to scroll down to a page I've set up that just has the information we need so that we can make those balance sheets. <coughs> the first thing you want to do is make a heading. Now I'm going to squeeze my balance sheets in side by side so you can see them at the same time. So I'm going to do one on the left and one on the right. But I'm going to go ahead and give them headings. All right, so here's a heading for one side. on the company, and this is going to be a balance sheet. Yeah, it looks funny when I write with this uh, zoom tool, but believe me, my handwriting is much better if I do, and I'll move it out of your way. You can see the whole thing. And this is going to be for the year ended, yes, it's okay to abbreviate that, uh, December 31, 12. That's our first year uh, given, given up here, right, 12. Now, scroll it up just a bit. We're going to start out with assets, so let's give it a heading over here. Assets. And we're going to end up on the other side, so I'm going to go over here and make, it, make a heading of liabilities. All right, so let's just do the assets first. The assets are pretty easy. You can see up here, We've got cash, try it again, make it small. we've got cash, accounts receivable, office supplies, office equipment, and machinery. The balance in building and land is zero, so we're going to just ignore those for now, but we need these five assets. We're just going to record them right here, so I'm going to scroll up a bit so you can see. And all I'm doing is copying them down. So we have the assets are cash. 
and we have how much cash? We have 20,000 in cash, I believe. Notice I'm always sticking my commas in when I have anything bigger than three digits. We have accounts receivable. It's okay to abbreviate. This is a standard abbreviation for accounts receivable of 35,000. And then what else do we have? We have office supplies. Oh, how much? 8,000. And office equipment. A forty thousand. And machinery. If you happen to have an iPad and you're wondering what the heck is this app, it's called Notability. I use it for all sorts of stuff. It uh, really, would be really handy for you for taking notes in class and working homework if you wanted to work it electronically. I'm using a stylus here, cheap stylus. So those are all our assets. That's all five of them. So I'm just going to draw a line because I know I'm about to do math here. We always draw a line when we're about to do math. And I'm going to scroll up and have a look. Did I get all five? And are my numbers correct? So double check that. And then give it a total. So let's add them all up. If we add them all up, what are we going to get? Well, it's going to be something with a 500 in it. It uh, looks like 131,500. Just be able to see the edge of my number so I can line them up. If you're doing math in your head, you'll probably be writing like I do, which is um, right to left. Right, I'm not using a calculator here. It's just not necessary. Now, this is our total asset, so let's give it a heading. I have a weird habit of using all capitals when I'm giving totals. Just sort of visually help me find it. It did the same thing in the headings. It's just the way I do it. You can do it that way or not. So now we need to get our liabilities. And in the liabilities, I believe, we only have the one. We only have accounts payable. All right, so I'm going to abbreviate that. A slash P, it's a very standard abbreviation, and I'm going to put its total over here. 4,000. And guess what? That's all the liabilities, so we don't need to give a total for the liabilities. Okay? Now, I'm probably, it occurs to me, going to need to move that over because I have to write a much bigger word further below. So I'm just going to tap it over a little bit. Because I think it's nice about this. You don't have to erase, you just move things around. Now, we're then going to need our total equity, so I'm going to give that a heading. You can center it if you like. I didn't center mine, but um, it might look better if you did. And then I'm going to put my total equity here. We have to figure out what it is, because this number's not given. Well, look, we have 131,500 here. We have 4,000 here. Total equity is going to have to be the number that makes that balance, right? Because assets equal liabilities plus equities, right? So what's 4,000 from 131,500? It's going to be 127,500. 127,500. Getting my best to line up with what I have above. Okay. Put an underline because we're about to do math. And then we're going to have our total liabilities, which I'm going to horribly abbreviate, and equities. And our total here should be 131,500. Double check it. Use your calculator if you must and make sure these are going to agree. All right, I'll make it big here. You can see it a little better. That is our balance sheet for 1231 for the year, probably should have put fiscal year here, for the year 2012. The nice thing about this app is I can make it neater. All right, on a date, balance sheet is on a date. 
Okay, now let's do the other one. So if we go back to our given information up here, we have some very similar given information. We have all the same assets, but then we have two more. So being uh, trying to be efficient here, I'm going to copy the names of my assets from over here. In fact, I'm going to copy the name of my full balance sheet, get my headings and pick them up. It's kind of mean because you can't write this fast, but I'll talk slow and you can write fast. So what am I doing? I am going to make another balance sheet over here. Same company, but the big difference is, of course, it's going to be for 2013. So I'm going to put a three right here. Okay. Now I have just lazily copied my asset total, so asset name, so I don't have to write them again, but I've got to make some room here to put in some more. All right. So sort of pause and talk slow for a moment while you catch up with your writing. We've got uh, all of our assets. We need to add two more in. I think they're uh, buildings and land, building and land and then get a total. So we're gonna have a bigger balance sheet over on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in building here. Let's see if I can make it big enough to write here. Building. And land. And I'll, feel free to pause anytime you think I, I've gone too fast or you're having trouble keeping up with the writing. You definitely need to write as we go along. So I've got all of my assets. I need to put all of their balances. So I've got I've got all of these numbers up here. Um, 5,000, 25,000, 13, 50, and so forth. And I need to write down here. Now you'll have it on a sheet of paper so you can see it. You don't have to see that on my screen while I write it. So I'm going to make it bigger so I can possibly write it without squeezing in. So cash at December 31, 2013 was $5,000, right? And accounts receivable were $25,000. And office supplies were $13,500. You notice I'm not rewriting the dollar sign. I'm just writing the numbers. You put the dollar sign on the first one in a column on which you're going to do math. And you don't need a dollar sign again until you get to a total or subtotal. So we have $40,000 in office equipment. And we have 28,500 in machinery. And we have a building that costs 250,000 and land that costs 50,000. I'm going to add all of that up and see what I get. Well, let's see. We've got lots of zeros and two 500, so it's going to be a bunch of zeros over here. And then what we have, 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 8. One, so we have a 2 and a 1 and a 4. So we have four, 412,000, and that's our total assets. I'm blowing it up big so I can write better. Okay, so that's half of our balance sheet. That's looking pretty good. Now, on the liability side, squeeze it down again, I'm going to have my accounts payable again. It's got a slightly different balance in the new year, but we're definitely going to have accounts payable again. But if we look up here on the top with the given information, you can see that we have not only the accounts payable, but we have notes payable. So we don't want to miss those. So I'm going to make this big enough to write. And I'm going to put accounts payable, whatever the balance was. Let's see, what is it? It's 12000 And then I'm going to put notes payable. And it's another one that's okay to abbreviate, N slash P. Anybody who's ever looked at any accounting will know you mean notes payable by that. So don't feel bad if you're abbreviating. As long as you know what the abbreviations are and they make sense, we're good. Well, since we have more than one, we're going to have to get a subtotal. So we've got 262,000 as our subtotal. So subtotal, we're going to put a dollar sign on it. Not a very neat one, apparently. 
and we're going to call it total liabs. So here's my total liabilities. I am so abbreviating that. Now we need to add to that our equity. So I'm going to put a little heading here. As I said before, I'm not having writing mine in the middle like your book does, but the middle is probably neater if you want to. So then I, that's just a heading. So then I'm going to put total equity and we're going to figure out what it is. Assets equal liabilities plus equities. So we have 412,000 over here in total assets. We have 262,000 in liabilities. If assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, you can subtract the liabilities from the assets and find out that the total equity is 150,000. And hopefully, those add up to 412,000. Looks like they do. Yeah, looking for. Lots of abbreviation here, trying to keep it big enough for you to see. So here's our balance sheet for uh, 1231.13. If I scroll to the other side, scroll to the other side, you can see the balance sheet for 2012. So if you need to pause it to look at one of these, uh, here's a good time to do that. 2012, 2013. Okay. Now, notice that the equities are quite different we're going to be asked to explain, hey, what's the difference there? So I'm just going to highlight total equity here, 150,000 in uh, the end of 13, and at the end of 12, it was 127,500. We're going to use those numbers later, okay? So all I've done is take the given information here and make two little balance sheets, okay? Now, let's go on. What happens next? Well, let's go back to those requirements. Here's our requirements. Prepare the balance sheet for the business as of December 31, 2012 and 2013. Hey, we just did that. I'm just going to put a big check mark there. Done. All right. By comparing equity amounts from the balance sheet and using the additional information presented in the problem, remember there was that paragraph. It was actually above the required uh, bits in the given, given problem, but I've got mine pasted here below. Prepare a calculation to show how much net income was earned. So we know what equity was at the end of 2012. We know what equity was at the end of 2013 because we just did the math on that. The ones I just highlighted in yellow on the previous page. So now we're going to take those numbers and we're going to figure out exactly what's going on with net income. We don't have anything here showing us net income, but now we're ready for it. So let's start out with those equity numbers. So what was equity, make it big enough to write here, what was equity at the end of the most recent period? So equity's balance at 1231.13 was 150,000, right? Go back to what we just worked. I think I highlighted it in yellow. Um, equity the year before, 1231, 12 was 127,500. So we can first figure out the difference. That's the change in equity. And of course it was increasing because it's a bigger number in 2013 than it was in 2012. So we know it's going to be an increase. So I'm just going to label it very carefully. Increase in equity. Of the difference between these two numbers. So what's the difference? We just subtract and we get 22,500. So we know there's a difference I'm going to get rid of this extra dollar sign here. There's a difference of 22,500. 
What is that difference made of? Well, we've got this lovely paragraph up here that gives us some idea. Late in December 2013, the business purchased a small office building and land. So they bought some office building and land. We noticed that reflected in our balance sheet. It paid cash toward the purchase and a $250,000 note payable. That's all fine. It's got nothing to do with equity. The next part does, though. We have an additional investment of $15,000 in exchange for common stock. So we have an owner investment in 2013 of equity. Right? They invest cash. They get equity back of $15,000. So $15,000 of that $22,500 is accounted for because the owner invested additional and got stock in exchange for it. So, let me bring my big zoom tool down here. I want to call this owner investment in 2013. Oops, not with the highlighter or not. Owner investment in 2013. And what was the amount of the investment? I believe it was $15,000. So we're going to put $15,000 here. All right. So $15,000 was invested by the owner. That means of the $22,500 change in equity, we can account for $15,000 of that through this. All right. So there's some we can't account for yet, but we can account for $15,000 through that. Now, the other thing it tells us is, oops, is the business pays dividends, all right? So where uh, the owner investment increased what was going on in our equity, the paying of dividends decreases it. We're, we're sending money out. So we're accounting for $22,500 of, of the equity by the fact that the owner invested $15,000, but on the other hand, we sent out dividends of 3000 So let's put that in here. Back to the pen. Dividends. And it said it was 250 a month. And there was 12 months in that year. So that's going to be 3000 All right. So 3000 has to be accounted for as well. So we know the 15000 increased the equity, so I'm subtracting it to try to get to what's left of the equity. And we know the dividends decrease the equity, so I'm adding it. You can flip it around and do it the other way if you want to. You can even set up an equation if that's easier for you. Um, you know, equity at the end of 2012 equals uh, equity in 2013, excuse me, equity in 2013 equals equity in 2012 plus owner investment minus dividends plus net income. Or if it's a negative net, you know, if it's net loss, it'd be minus net income. So you could do it that way as well. In fact, I might do it that way just to show you there's multiple ways to do it. So if I take 22,500, subtract 15,000 and add 3,000, what do I have? I have 10,500. So we have figured out net income, which is what we were asked to do in part two. All right, now, alternate way to do it. Let's slide up just a little bit here. Alternate way to do it. You can think of how do we get to the new equity balance? Well, we start with the old equity balance. So let's say equity in 2012, right? December 31, 2012, plus any owner investment. minus dividends paid out plus net income. And that's going to give us, and it could be minus net loss if there's a net loss, that's going to give us the equity in 2013. the end of 2013. All right, I'll blow that up big for you. That's a different way to solve the problem that's going to give you the same result. 
All right, so let's punch it in and see if it works. So we've got everything in this uh, that I did before slapped into one equation. So the equity in 2012, end of 2012, was 127,500. The owner invested another 15,000, which increases equity. We paid out dividends of 3,000, which decreases equity. So then we have net income, which in this case we're trying to solve. So that's going to be our unknown, call it X or N or something. And we know our final equity, because we already did the math on that, is moving around too much, is 150. So all I gotta do is solve for the missing N. Solve for the missing one item. So it would be 150 minus 127 minus 15,000 plus 3,000, and that would get your N, and that would solve your problem. Okay? So we'd have, uh, we can rearrange it if you like, to be 150. I'm gonna move it to this side. We're gonna subtract 150 from both sides. Then we're going to add... It's 11 o'clock. We're going to subtract 150 from both sides. So obviously that side is becoming zero at the moment. Or we can move it all this way. We're taking our N. Let's do that. So we're going to take our N, leave it on a side by itself where it is, and then we're going to have our 150 over here on the right, but then we're going to move every, all the math, all the numbers from the other side. So minus 127,500 minus, because we're getting rid of them, 15,000 plus 3,000. All right, so we've got 150 minus 127,500 minus 15,000. So 27 plus 15 would be. 37.425 minus 142.5, does that sound right? And plus 3,000. So minus 142.5, so it's going to be minus 139.5. So 150,000 minus 139.5 is going to give us our N equal to 10,500. So that's just solving the same problem in a slightly different way, the logic is still the same. You solve it any way you want that makes sense with how accounting works. Now, let's go back up to part three. We've now done part two. We're gonna give a big check mark. Look at part three. Calculate the December 31, 2013 debt ratio. Debt ratio, I'm just gonna squeeze it in right here. So we want a debt ratio and we want it in 2013, so I'm going to put 2013 to remind me what year I'm doing. And we're doing a debt ratio. What is a debt ratio? A debt ratio is total liabilities divided by assets. It's called debt ratio because debt is on the top. Liabilities are debts. So let's take total liabilities and divide by total assets. Right at the year end of 2013. All right, so total liabilities. Pull it back up here. Total liabilities, if you go back to your balance sheet, were 262. Just go look at the balance sheet you did in part one, 262. And total assets, if you go back to the balance sheet you did in part one for the December 12, December 31, 2013, were 412. And that's going to give you, multiply it out, 63.6%. Okay? And that's the debt ratio. All right, so that's the solution to this problem. You have balance sheets for 12-31-12 and 12-31-13.
you have explained the changes in equity by identifying how much was net income and using all this external paragraph given information, and you have calculated the debt ratio. All right, I hope that was helpful.